Welcome back. We are still busy with collections and the next collection we will look at is called maps or in some languages they refer to as dictionaries and basically it is a collection of key value pairs. So for example I could have the following values. Let's say I've got a username for a person or for a user. I've got a username, I've got a password, I've got a role and I've got a staff number. So I could have a key that's called username and the value should be Peter. I've got a key called password and the value should be Peter123. I've got a key called role and the, and the value should be admin. And I've got a key called staff number and the value should be 9911. So a map will help us with this as it's a collection of key and value pairs. So how do we declare a map? So let's declare this specific map that we've got there at the top and we're going to say var user equals and the map also uses the curly braces or the curly brackets but in this case it's not just one value we will have two sets of values or a key and a value pair so we will start off with the key first and the key first will be username then a colon and then the value for that specific key in this case Peter so I'm following what we have here then you place a comma and you go to the next line Again, the key, which will be password, colon, and then the password's value, 123, Peter 123. Put the comma again. Now again, the value or the, the key, so it will be role. And then go on and the value for that role will be admin. And now you can also have different types here, not just string. So you can see this type is string, the key, and then the value is also string. But I can also have a string key there, let's say the staff number, and then have a staff number of 9911, which is an integer value. So this is how we would declare a map. So we've got the key and the value pair another key and a value pair and another key and, an, and a value and a key and a value so it's a collection of keys and value pairs so let's see at explicitly also declaring something like this so you, you can see that we have declared it as a variable as a var which means that the dot language will automatically infer the type so how can we declare the type as a map so you can basically just start, start typing map there and then say user let's say user 2 equals and then you can you can give through your map and that's fine because it, uh, it will see this as a map now user 2 will be a map but the values inside are still key and value pairs so i can for example use this the angled brackets again and go and say the key must be string and the value must also be string so now i'm defining what is the type of the key and what is the type of the value so in this case both are strings but if I use then something else as a string for the value then it will give me an error so what's mostly used is that you use the second one as dynamic which means that your key is always a string so you you have a, a string key easy easily to identify but your value will be dynamic which means I can add something like a staff number with an integer or maybe a logged in value as a false or a true. So then this is the, the normal way of doing it to have a string as the key and then whatever data type you want as the value. Now we can also do it like this. We can go and say var user three equals, there's just the empty, um, empty map, but I can also go and declare it right at the start there to say that should be string and this one should also be string or maybe dynamic so this is explicitly declaring it as a specific type for the key and the value p but something like this will be more than sufficient for what you want now let's see how we can get values back from this map so I'm going to add a comment there getting values using keys okay so for example if I want to get the username out of this map because that's the username should be Peter if I want to get the username, I will go and say, go to the user map, use the square brackets and get a specific value called, or using the key, get the value for the username. So I will go to the map 
and in the map I've got a list of keys there and just specifying the key will return the value for me. So if I print out that username now, let's run it, I will get Peter. If I uh, use, let's say, the role there, I will now get the role as, well, obviously the variable will also change, but you can see I get the role. Uh, if, if I ask for the staff number and I run it again, I will get the staff number, which is 9911. So you just indicate the key in the squared brackets and it will give you the value. So let's just keep it as username. Right, so the next part is how can I set a new value for a key? Right, so we can go and say, go to the map, let's change the password, and the password should be changed to Peter, let's make it a capital P, 12345. And let's print out user. So you can see the, the, the map there. We've got the username Peter. We've got the password now changed to Peter12345. So again, going to your map, indicating with your squared brackets the specific key, and then using the equal sign to change it. Now we can use the exact same way to add a new key and value pair here. So let's say we want to add something that doesn't exist currently in this map. So I could have logged in, and I'm going to set that to true. And now if we print it out, you will see we have a new key value pair there, which is called logged in, and it is automatically set to true, which means using this notation will change a value that's currently there, but it will also add something that's not there. All right, let's look at uh, something else also, the specific type that gets returned, for example, there. So I'm going to use that again, var username equals user username. Let's make it var password equals, and let's go to the user map, and we get the password from there. Now let's say I wanted to print out the length of the password. So if I go to password, and I put the dot there, you can see that I do not have the option for a length. So one way of correcting this would de be to declare this as a string and then I can go and say, you can see now the length uh, is possible for me to select there if I do not know the method by heart. Uh, so that's one way of getting past that so that I can actually get to the length method automatically picked up by the autocomplete and even now you can see that it's, it's not actually allowing me to use the length method there. So what we can do also, instead of declaring this as a string, we can use the as keyword at the, at the end and use string there, which means it's going to take this value as a string and assign it to password, which means this password becomes a string also. Now if I remove this and I click on password, let's just hide it, you can see it's of type object. So it doesn't really know what it is currently. So if we run this now, it will give you a problem. But if I say as string there, and I run it, it will give me the value of 10, because the password has got 10 characters. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters. And now I can use the length. So uh, just remember about this as string also, or as int, or as whatever you want. And then you can also declare it as a specific type if you've got problems with using a specific method of that type. Now let's look at uh, something else also where we can be accessing values that do not exist. For example, let's say I go to variable IP address and we can see the IP address is not part of that map. So let's say we want to get the IP address of that specific user and I will go to user and I will try to access the IP address. And then let's print out the IP address. Now if I run this, you will see it prints out a special value called null, which basically means there's nothing inside of this variable, and this variable is basically empty. So it's a specific value, which means that this thing sent back nothing. 
So just take note of this null value. Later on, we'll talk about uh, the null values and how we can use them and how we can um, make sure that we do not run into problems with these null values. For example, if I'm going to use this as a string and I try to go and use the length method there and I run it now, it's going to give me a problem because the value on which I want to try and get the length doesn't exist. There's nothing in it. So that gives me a problem. So instead of printing it out just like this, we could first test if IP address equals null. Then we will print out the value is empty. And the else part will be that the value is not null and we actually will have something there and then we can print out the length of it. So if we run it now, you can see the error will be gone, but it will now say the value is empty. So this is how we can handle some of the errors of null, but we'll get into null values later on. Right, then the last thing I want to quickly have a look at is the for loop and how you can run through elements inside of a map. So for example, let's use this uh, for loop again, the for in loop. So I'm going to say for variable, let's say value in. And what did we call the map? We called it user. So let's say var value in user. And then we want to do something. And now you can see it gives me a problem there. And if I click on the problem, let's just go to show there. It says that the type map string object used in the for loop must implement iterable. So that's because a map has got a key and a value pair. It's not the same as a list or a set that's just got a collection of values. This is a collection of key value pairs. So a list as well as a set implements iterable so it's easy to work with in a for loop by just saying var value in user but for a map it's a bit different so for a map we can do the following let's change that to key for var key in and then i can go to user and i can put the dot there and say keys so now if i print out this value of key let's print out this one quickly and i run it you'll see it prints out all the keys for me username, password, role, staff number, and logged in. If I say values in values, and I print out the values, or just say value, so user.values will give me all the values. And I run it now, instead of saying username, password, role, I'll get the values. Okay, so that's how I can print out the keys and the values on their own. Let's go back to key again. I can still use keys also, but instead of saying just printing out key there, I could print out user at that specific key. Now, if I run this, instead of printing out the keys now, it will give me also the values for all the, all the different keys. But probably the most effective one will be this one where we say, let's go to a specific entry inside of the map called user and we access the list of entries for var in. User.entries will get me all of the entries, that's the key value pairs, and now we can go and print out the key value pair, which means that I can go and say, let's go for example and say, the first one will be the key, so I'm gonna use entry.key, and then put a colon, and then we can access entry dot value. So if we print that one out, we get the combination of both. So I will get the username, the username, or the key and the value, the key and the value, the key and the value. So I think this one is the most effective one where you can actually, in that entry, you've got both the key and the value, and you can use the key and the value as you want. That's it for maps. See you in the next one.